morning, ladies and gentlemen. The Camp Board of Education Community Input Meeting, Monday, December 2nd, 2013, 545, was supposed to be at 545 uh, p.m., and we're 15, 30 minutes late. Uh, if you will, I will call the, the speakers uh, by the first five. Uh, and we will uh, proceed at that time. But prior to that time, we will have our guidelines. I uh, will ask Dr. Mike, Michael Irwin to read our guidelines for this evening. Good evening. Welcome to the community input meeting. In accordance with board policy BCBI, public speaking at board meetings, each speaker will be limited to three minutes. The community input meeting will be a maximum of one hour or 20 speakers and it is limited to topics concerning the management and operation of the school district. It shall, it shall be out of order to any citizen to attack verbally an employee of the school district in a public meeting. For purpose of public comment, an employee does not include the superintendent or any members of the DeKalb County Board of Education. The board will not allow abusive language, threats, jeers, comments, applause, or shouts from the floor. In the event that happens, we will ask the disruptive person to leave the meeting room. Also, the board is here to listen to input. This meeting is not the forum for the board to respond to comments, given that the board will not have had time to consider and deliberate regarding comments presenting here today. If you have any handouts, please give them to Ms. Tyson, sitting in the front row. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Irwin. Uh, at this time, um, I would like to thank the um, citizens for coming today to express yourselves as it relates to your concerns. Uh, the first five speakers will be Kurt Lundy, Mr. Tim uh, DeBarbeladen, uh, Nicole Wilson, Jessica Law, and Rainer, Dr. Raina Williams. Good evening. My Good evening. Name, my name is Kirk Lundy. I live in Tucker. I'm here speaking on my own behalf. I'm not representing anybody else. And I'd like to remind Mr. Thurman that he's uh, not allowed to respond. <laughs> um, welcome back from uh, Thanksgiving, and I hope you all had a good break. Uh, I have a couple things I want to address. Oh, it's really loud. I'll back up here. All right. Um, one is the Druid Hills Charter Cluster. Um, if you read the emails I sent, you know I don't have a strong position on whether or not the petition was approved. However, the, uh, the actions of the meeting um, bear comment. Um, you should be aware, and I don't know if the board is aware, that on October 22nd there was a meeting held between uh, school district staff and representatives of the board from Druid Hills Charter Cluster, during which it was supposed to be a time that will be utilized for petitioners to receive clarification regarding the charter petition review results. Um, the charter petition review results were um, what was found to be missing or lacking in the petition. So two people from the board went to that meeting and they said, what guidelines did you use to determine this information was lacking because we can show you in the petition everything that you say we're missing, it's all there. Um, and uh, through email conversations I had with one of the next speakers uh, said that the staff refused to answer their questions. Um, so that should be a clue to some people, and I don't know if the board was aware of that. Um, there was an uh, approximately an $11 million discrepancy between uh, what they were requesting in revenues and what Dr. Bell said that they should get. Um, Five million of that was for food service, transportation, and maintenance. The other six million um, was revenue earned by the students, according to the state formulas, but is currently being spent by the central office. So the question is not to them, where's the six million dollars? The question is to Mr. Thurman and administration, where's the other six million dollars? Um, 
time went very quickly. I want to thank Mr. Thurman for his emails over the Thanksgiving holiday regarding conversation he and I had about uh, childhood trauma and his desire to do something to help the teachers be aware of and to better educate students who experience childhood trauma. Um, Department of Family and Children's Services says that there are children in every school of our district that are in the system and they all have experienced trauma. They need all, all need extra help. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Lundy. Hello, my Hi. name's Tim DeBard Laban, and I'm here to talk to you about the old Barcliff High School again. Uh, as y'all probably all know, we wanted to have a tour for all alumni. It was just something that was thrown at us at the last minute because of the August 3rd tour for the class of 73. You originally said it was going to be for all alumni. And then at the last minute, they changed it. Well, now we're told we can't tour Barcliff High School because of the vagrants in it. That just seems like a pretty poor excuse. Then we were told the fire marshal didn't want us in there. Well, the fire marshal probably doesn't want us in there because all the doors are welded shut. Well, the people aren't going, breaking in there going through the doors. They're breaking in going through the quarter-inch interior Luan plywood that you put up. So it's just sort of a catch-22. We keep running around in circles. But the real reason I want to talk tonight is you need to use that school. I mean, if you look at the school itself, it's in a central location, easy access to the expressway, and it's on a martyr line. There is a thousand uses you could be using that school for other than a warehouse. You have a warehouse there that I guarantee you nobody knows what's in that warehouse. I remember listening to Dr. Morley at one of these meetings talking about, I believe it was Towers High School, that the athletic equipment was so bad it was just literally rotting away. Well, I sent our email saying, well, you better go to Barcliffe High School because the boys' locker room is filled with exercise equipment. So I sure do hope Towers got the use out of that equipment. But right off, I would say use that gym for, an, you know, you could use it for a sports and entertainment center. Actually have summer camps there for your student athletes to improve their game, to know what they need to do. You could hold um, anything from recitals to talent shows to, I mean, there's a million things you can use with just that gym alone. The rest of the school would be a great place to set up a career academy. You could also use it for uh, continuing education courses. Keep that school open from like 7.30 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. Give our student athletes a place that they can go and work out in a healthy environment place that you can protect your kids, keep them away from the steroids, keep them away from gangs, keep them away from so many things. I just left Conway, South Carolina, and the principal up there at that high school kept doing event after event. I asked him why, and he says, because if I can keep my kids in my school, I can protect them. When they're out on the streets, I can't protect them. I ask you to think about it. Please utilize Barcliffe High School. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Nicole Wilson, Jessica Law, Mingalava. That means hello in Burmese. My name is Jessica Law. I am a third grade, third year teacher at the International Community School. And I'm here this evening just to shed some light on what makes ICS such an amazing school here in DeKalb County. To begin, I just want to highlight one of the reasons that our school is an amazing place to work, and that is the support. So I'd just like for everyone who is here on behalf of ICS to please stand. And this is just a great example of the type of support that we receive at our school for everything that we do. I have here tonight essentially my love letter for ICS. And to begin, I think the best place to start is why we all do this work, which is for our kids. As a 
person right out of undergrad, a first year teacher, I was placed in a fifth grade classroom at ICS, staring into the faces of my students, all of them from places like Kurdistan, Eritrea, Cuba, Iraq, the US, Sudan, and Nigeria. And while many other times in my life I would have considered those students to feel othered, I could instantly tell that my kids saw each other first as people. It has always amazed me at how well our students are able to connect their life experiences with concrete examples of learning. In fifth grade, students are required to do a semester-long research project. And one of my students, her family had to flee Iran because of their religious beliefs. She used this as the foundation for her semester-long project in which she researched different government structures, what creates an effective leader, and most importantly, the rights that people have. Her research took her to a place where she ended up writing a letter to her former government and created an informational packet that she shared with her peers and our admin. What I love about our school is watching the exchange of ideas that take place. Envision right now in my third grade classroom, Sarah, an Indian student who is in our ESOL program, and Nada, a student from Somalia and who also takes Spanish. They're reading a book together, and while they're reading, they stop and Sarah goes, oh, that says Spanish words, and I know you take Spanish, and you tell me what it means in Spanish, and I'll tell you what it means in English, and then I'll translate it into Hindi. That is an amazing learning experience to me. And while I know these stories can take place in other schools around the nation, ICS is a special place where students are safe and honored for their lived experiences. They can unapologetically be who they are. We are a school bound in love. I love this school. This school makes me love teaching. It makes me love being a citizen of the world. I hope that as you read the pages of our charter submitted today, please remember that ICS is an intentional place with an intentional name and an intentional mission of helping our kids find their place in the world. We are a community of love. Thank you for listening and thank you for your careful consideration of our charter renewal. Thank you very much uh, for your comments, uh, Jessica. Hello, I'm Rena Williams. Um, I'm here as a, to represent um, ICS as a parent, a board member, and to also speak as a Georgia State University Turn teacher. your mic on, if you will. Pull your mic, mic down, down, please. Thank you. Sorry, Sorry there. <clears throat> I'll start again. I'm Rena Williams. Um, I, I'm a parent at ICS. I'm also on the board, and I'd also like to speak as a teacher educator. I work at Georgia U State University, and I've done some work with teachers at ICS. So as a parent, I want to say that I chose ICS because the first time I was there looking at different schools, um, the first thing that stood out to me was just the kids playing on the playground, and they were playing soccer. Um, and it was kids from all different parts of the world playing together, and there, was no, there were no signs of cliques, and there were no signs of, um, you know, just what you might see on a typical playground. And that's the first thing that really caught my attention there. Um, and then having my son there for the third year now, I've been overly impressed with the excellent learning that he comes home with, with, with the people that he talks about. His friends are from, you know, different parts of the world, and I absolutely love that. And then as a parent, also feeling a sense of community there. The other piece I've, I've the other eyes I've looked at ICS through is um, the eyes of a teacher educator. The teachers there, as Jessica Law just um, expressed, are excellent, and they are there because they are committed to the work they do, not just teaching anywhere, but teaching where they teach at ICS. Um, they are there because it's a unique school, because they are there to support the kids, and they really believe in this idea of ICS being a place where people come together and learn from each other and work with each other. They have high expectations from their kids, and more important than anything else is they don't look at the deficits in their children. They look at all children as you know, with the strengths that they come into the school with. And that is something that, you know, DeKalb County needs to really highlight as what's excellent about it. Um, and finally, I want to just um, say about ICS that this is, this is a model school for DeKalb County. This is a school that DeKalb County can look at and say, you know what, we've got kids like this all over our county, and we need to look at a school that's, that's proven to be successful with kids. And we need to look at what they're doing as possibly, a, you know, ways that we can implement in other schools, too. Um, they're working, as you, as you know, as you might know, that, they're, you know, the, 
the commitment to having the students there that are from different parts of the world, so the American-born as well as the um, foreign-born kids is very important to us, as evidenced by the fact that we've put our money in it to pay for buses to bring kids to our school. So I hope that you will give it every bit of your attention and consideration um, as you look at the charter renewal. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for coming, Dr. Williams. Mr. Matthew Lewis, uh, Mr. Paul Womack, uh, Mr. Larry Johnson, uh, Mrs. Deidre Pierce, uh, Angela Hale. Sorry. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Superintendent, I'm Matt Lewis, a resident of DeKalb County, a parent of two DeKalb County school system students, one a graduate and one a current student at Druid Hills High School. I served with the organizing committee of the proposed Druid Hills Charter Cluster and was named to be a member of its governing board. I speak today to thank the board for its consideration of the Charter Cluster on November the 11th and to respectfully request that the board provide the Druid Hills Charter Cluster with the written notification of denial in accordance with the Charter Schools Act. In correspondence to the chairman and to the superintendent on November 21st, 2013, Mr. Fred Daniels, also a member of the proposed DHCC governing board, indicated our plan to file a revised petition, also in accordance with the Charter Schools Act. In order to file that revised petition, we need to have the formal written notification of denial from this board. In the interest of the students and teachers of the seven schools in our proposed charter cluster and the parents and community members affected by the proposed charter cluster, we would like for the process to proceed as quickly as possible toward its ultimate resolution. The formal letter from the board reflecting its action on November the 11th, 2013, and the corresponding reasons for that action is the next step in that process. We appreciate your prompt attention to the necessary formal ratification of your decision. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Walmack. Mr. Chairman, Superintendent Thurman, members of the board. I departed this board December last year, and I said I would never criticize it, publicly or privately. I'm going to do that tonight. It's my understanding that you're about to embark on the settlement of the Harry Mitchell case. Say what you may about the board that I served on. That board was unanimous in its support of the lawsuit of Harry, against Harry Mitchell. We saw the evidence, and we believed what we saw. This board has not met with the attorneys except to renegotiate the contract. Two members of the board and the superintendent did meet, it's my understanding, with Harry Mitchell's attorney. And it was quite a hostile meeting, especially from Mr. Orson. This board is leaving, if it settles to the figure that I have heard of under $10 million, is leaving between 20 and $30 million on the table. This Board of Education has spent in legal fees and forensic investigation upward of $20 million. And to settle for what you are, I think it borders on malfeasance in office. A firm like King and Spalding does not devote their time and energy to a case like this under the circumstances of their enumeration unless they believed in it. The evidence is overwhelming against Harry. I couldn't understand why one of your board members would lobby me to settle this case while I was on the board. That was done periodically over four years. Last week, I read a blog, and I saw what I consider a conflict of interest by one of your board members, a $500 contra political contribution from a member of DLA Piper law firm that represents Harry. 
Also, this member serves on a board of trustees or for a citizens committee with a member vice president of HERI. Gentlemen, you need to reassess if you're going to settle. At least get what this board spent. The evidence is there. King and Spalding did not invest their time just because they thought they had a good case. They have a solid case. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Womack. Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, School Board, Superintendent Thurman. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of consent agenda item number five, on behalf of McNair High School to receive that designation. Uh, the reason I stand before you, it, it, uh, the high school is in West DeKalb. Uh, it's, it's very positioned very keenly as we as it relates to 285 and Boulder Crest. We're working on a major overlay district in that area. This career academy will be a great asset to that area. It's going to focus on IT, health IT, uh, biotechnology, uh, teaching as a profession. But it also is very strategic as it relates to uh, being close to Hartsfield, 15 minutes from Hartsfield. We have a major uh, business industrial park in that area. Uh, Snyder Trucking Industry is there, one of the largest trucking companies in the world, about $3.5 billion in terms of profit and business over the years. Uh, McNair High School, I think, will be a great location and asset for this charter school. And I'm hoping that you all keep that in mind. We got some members from McNair that are here tonight. I want them to stand up. We just got a few, but we, we can bring more. But these are very key people that are going to make things happen in our community. So I just, just wholeheartedly would love to have this public-private partnership. I see businesses coming in that can partner with McNair to really make this a stellar program. I see the charter as a renewal, as a renaissance in our community. And I want to thank our, our superintendent and our school board members who represent that area, who, who uh, I know will champion that cause because uh, the folks in that area deserve something better. And I think this will be a great asset and something that we can bring to the table and really make a difference in our community. So I just asked the board to support McNair High School for that designation as the College and Career Academy for this charter that you are proposing for the consent agenda item number five. Thank you. Thank you for coming, uh, Commissioner Johnson. And good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm Deidre Pierce, and I'm serving this evening as a member of the McNair High School School Council. And I'd like to echo the sentiments that have been expressed by Commissioner Johnson regarding the uh, career, College and Career Academy. I would also like to recommend McNair High School. And I, I have to reference a good book that says sometimes there's nothing new under the sun. Uh, one being back in 1989, if you'll indulge me, uh, McNair High School received a proclamation from then CEO Leanne Levitan that said that they cel she celebrated the grant opening of its student-operated bank, REM Student Bank and Trust, the first of its kind in the DeKalb County school system and operated through the student banking program sponsored by Capital City Bank and Trust. That to me is a community partnership and that is a solid business partnership. That bank held its own until two years ago. So just from 1989 to just a couple of years ago, I'll let you do the math. On also, on June 2001, we made a proposal on behalf of the administration, community, parents, business leaders, <clears throat> excuse me, and others, to ask for a campus enhancement proposal that was brought to the superintendent, then Halford, and the board, asking for McNair High School to be considered uh, for money allocated to a career technology building, as well as an auditorium. We were the first in the system. We brought that to the, to the school board for a very distinct reason. For the very things that you're listing here for a college and career academy was the same thing we were asking for then. Back in that time, we mentioned things such as to provide our students with more hands-on learning experiences, prepare students for viable and pro profitable careers after high school, offer students interesting courses, promote a positive learning environment, provide encouragement to non-college-bound students, encourage our community and school pride, encourage our students to remain at their home school for a reason. 
We didn't want our students having to leave the campus for something they could very well have at their own building. I also, again, suggest that you please consider the proposal here for this consent, consent agenda number five and approve that. Go ahead and apply for it, but also give consideration for McNair High School, which already has everything inside of it that's needed to make it successful. And thank you for your consideration. Thank you for coming, Mrs. Pierce. You're welcome. Angela Hale. Esteemed DCSD board members, district staff, and DeKalb parents, students, and citizens, I'm here tonight representing the International Community School. Through luck, happenstance, and parent referrals, I and my children were, appoint were appointed to ICS. My second child graduated from there a year and a half ago. So my children were lucky enough to go to the school where teachers like Jessica Law teach. I'm a product of DeKalb County Schools. I attended Sagamore Hills Elementary and carry within me the inspiration of DeKalb teachers like Ms. Studgeon, Ms. Higdon, Ms. Holbrook, Ms. Kipe, teachers who inspired me with the story of Johnny Tremaine or ancient Egypt or the workings of the human eye. I attended Briarcliff High School and was inspired by Ms. Bloom, Coach Adamson, Coach Jabley, or Gracie Hunter, who imparted Shakespeare and Kurt Vonnegut, Thoreau's Walden, or the debate on capital punishment. These DeKalb County teachers enhanced my life. DeKalb County schools equipped me well. Here we are in the present. Decades later, the world is worldlier and the county is worldlier too. DeKalb County, and in particular Clarkston, Georgia, is privileged to be uniquely global. We have steady streams and sudden bursts of displaced population from Colombia, Burma, Nepal, Iraq, Ethiopia, or Sudan, to name a few places. You know this already. I'm here tonight to affirm that ICS is a unique and worldly charter school that relishes this diversity. We view the cultural differences among our students as a key strength. This difference propels us and thrills us. Walls come down between people when everyone is different. Difference becomes the rule. We want you, the DeKalb County School District and Board, to know us. We want to tear down any walls. We are in partnership for the educational success of DeKalb County students. At ICS, we provide additional layers of support. We have a teacher-student ratio of 1 to 12 by offering teaching assistance in the classroom some from refugee backgrounds themselves who provide added instruction and more individualized attention. We have a community feel that just won't quit. Teachers who might leave come back to study with their ICS colleagues. Our teachers are underpaid like all teachers, only more so, but they are there every day. They consider their work a calling, not a job. They want to invest their best work in enriching our worldly students. In turn, our students don't want to miss school, even when they are sick. They ultimately leave us as well-educated model citizens, gifted in the ways of acceptance and cooperation, well-equipped to stand before the DeKalb County School Board 20, 30, or 40 years from now and name their outstanding life-changing teachers from ICS like Drew Whiteleg, Maggie Deaton, Jessica Law, or Evelyn Litzenberg. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hale. Mr. James Waddell, or Marnie Mayo, and if Nicole Wilson can, uh, is in the building, you'll be last. Greetings. Greetings, Commissioner Th Superintendent Thurman, board, and citizens of DeKalb County. My name is James Waddell, and I represent Southwest DeKalb High School. Ladies and gentlemen, Southwest DeKalb is under attack. And the Panther Nation is under attack because we have, there is virtually no security at Southwest right now. 
And we need, as I was here last month, I'm imploring this, uh, the board to provide us with those resources that would help us keep off, keep away people who aren't interested in learning at our school. Our, our kids aren't safe. Um, just the other day, a student left campus in frustration and had it not been for me, no telling where that little girl would be. So people, it's like Southwest is like an open campus. You can come on campus, you can, you can transact drug trades, you can have sex in cars. Ladies and gentlemen, that to me is incomprehensible, that a school that size is just not secure. We have no police presence at all. I was told we're going to be getting it soon, but soon is not soon enough for me. So I am imploring, as I did last month, and I'll be imploring next month and the month after the month after, we have to protect our Panthers. We have to protect our Panthers. Once we get them in school, then they can go on and be productive. But in the meantime, our school is under attack from other elements who have been driven off other campuses. And I know that we can find it in the budget somewhere for more security. I kind of this size. If you care about our students, which I do passionately, I have one student at Southwest and another student who graduated from Southwest last year and is currently in Mississippi Valley State. I'm going to keep fighting for our, for our school, for our kids. And it's just not about Southwest. It's about, I'm sure other, other schools are under attack also, but mainly, specifically Southwest. We need more resources. I've been promised them on several occasions. I keep hearing over and over again, I'm working on it. Well, to me, that's sounding very hollow. I'm getting impatient. Come to the school and you can see, since we've got that new project going on, now there's even more places to do unsavory things. So I'm asking the board again, as I'm going to ask you next month, we need more security at Southwest. I'm on the front lines every day, but it's only so much myself and Mr. Pringle can do. So I'm asking you to come to Southwest. I'll take you on a tour, and you can see the hot spots there, because right now, all I'm getting is rhetoric. I'm getting a bunch of hollow words and no action. So you're going to see me again on the, the first meeting night of next month because, you know, it's, to me it's all about the Panthers. These young kids have a right to get the documents that you all have. And right now they aren't safe. So I'm going to keep fighting the fight. I'm going to stand the front line. And um, thank you for listening to me this time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wardell. Hello, my name is Marnie Mayo, and um, I have some sad history to share as regards Hooper Alexander, which I believe is, is on the agenda for sale at, um, in, in the consent agenda. Don't have any problem with that. That's the logical thing to do at this point. But I want to take you back to February of 2009. At that time, Hooper was a DeKalb Elementary School of the Arts with 550 kids, they didn't want to leave. There is still bitterness at DESA over the decision being made that, that, that forced their leaving. At that time, I was chair of the International Community School. And the principal and I approached Crawford Lewis and said, well, we'd like to discuss rental, sale, whatever of that property. And he said he'd welcome that. So we made a, a, an appointment to talk to Pat Pope. It took her then in February of that year. It took her exactly 13 minutes to tell us nothing would be for sale, there was in fact no policy for anything to be on sale, and if there were any discussion, we would get no more consideration than Joe who wants to put a filling station there. Uh, at that time, we had a reporter from the Christian Science Monitor who did a story that actually was internationally run about the struggle that our school had to, to get a building. That story and a blog I wrote with that was laid on the desk of every legislator that March, and that was in large part why HB 555, which is the legislation that requires you to discuss with charter schools, vacant buildings, passed. In May of that year, I talked to the facilities subcommittee of the board, and Pat Pope said that the building was worth $4.5 million. Well, you know, nobody questioned that. Nobody really questioned things. That fall, though, we did get a surplus property policy, which I think is what you're under right now. And we had some other things happen. And Ms. Ramona Tyson became um, interim superintendent. And we finally got access to that building. 
and Ari Silverman and Silverman Construction did a look at that building. Within that year, $3.3 million worth of vandalism had occurred. And that is in large measure why no one can use that building anymore. And although what you may be doing now is logical, I just want to kind of put it in the public record that for at least two years, I had to take my children to two separate campuses. And for several years, ICS lived with those two campuses. And now it is on the block to be sold for $640,000. That is poor stewardship. And that is part of why there is so much mistrust. And I, I welcome your leadership. And I thank you for just letting me state that into the record. Thank you, Mrs. Mayo. Uh, Nicole Wilson. And she's the final uh, speaker for the evening. Oh, she's not here. Okay. At this time, I thank you for your uh, comments this evening, and I thank you for, for coming. Um, that concludes our um, citizen comments uh, session.